hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com and this is let me bore you to sleep and <sighs> I would give you the uh, website address to my podcast, but I don't remember what it is. This podcast is hosted on Podbean. dot com. Um, and some people may be thinking, why is Jason telling us? about where the podcast is hosted because those who are listening to the podcast would know where it is because they too are there also I nearly said they too are also there don't really need to and also in the same sentence really I guess but however Mr. Clever Clocks oh by the way only listen or watch this when you can safely close your eyes as this may can may cause boredom So, uh, I have uh, I actually have these podcast episodes, these Let Me Bore You to Sleep sessions on a variety of different podcasts not only the main one which as I said is on Podbean hosted by Podbean it's also on my SoundCloud main podcast it's also on my Podomatic Sleep Hypnosis podcast it's also available as a video on my YouTube channel called Jason Newland's Sleep Hypnosis the actual uh, yeah so and then it expands through it's also available on Spreacher or Spreaker yeah, Spreaker and so uh, this podcast Let Me Bore You To Sleep is available there it's a it's available all over the place that's why I'm getting three downloads a day three listens, three plays, whatever I'm pleased with that three is a really good number I'm hoping by the end of the year I'm not going to say four for comedic effect but I'll be happy with nine if I can get nine nine plays nine regular people to listen to this oh he'd be happy it'd be good so the, the point of this is just me talking and it seems to have turned into a daily thing which wasn't meant to happen necessarily it wasn't on my list of 
things that I would like to accomplish before I'm 48 because I'm 47 at the moment and I think instead of having a target of things you'd like to do before you die you know I mean that seems a bit a bit extreme I mean what happens when you accomplish all those things so I like the idea of maybe things I'd like to accomplish before I don't know it could be anything before I ne next have to trim my pubes just you know have a, a shorter target would be maybe useful things I'd like to accomplish before I next have to visit my family before I next have to have a bath you know due to the smell Yeah, it's bad when you just when you can't even tolerate your own stink. <laughs> you have to force yourself to have a bath. And as you're filling the bath up, you can hear the bath moaning. Like, oh God, no, that thing's gonna get in me. Oh. So, the point of these sessions is that there is a point. It might seem that it's just me talking rubbish. And you'd be correct, I guess, in some ways for that. But there's more to it. There's... It's that connection that you have with my voice. And those feelings, those senses of relaxation, that trigger that just causes you to automatically feel tired. occurs naturally and there's the benefit this this is something that okay I'm gonna explain something and I'm gonna be really long-winded and boring with it because that's that's my favorite way to explain stuff I love to just take time and go through all the details and I like that, it's, it suits me, but I know that it doesn't suit everybody to listen, but in this situation it's good because it's not really something that you need to listen to, but if you want to you can, you're not going to, I don't think it's going to necessarily do anything you know it's not gonna it might not change your life but it's it's a few ideas about stuff and, and the reason you may think well we well you might not think but what I'm doing is I'm trying to stall myself because I've actually forgotten what I was gonna say because I spent so much time preparing you for the amazingness of what I was going to say it's like gone it's gone actually I think it has gone let me see if I can retrieve it yeah I've got it so now it's gone again yeah I got it I got it back 
So one of the benefits of doing these sessions now it's gone it's gone again. Um oh yeah, got it, okay. Is Excuse that, it's my bottle of water. I like the idea of having variety. So you could listen to the same session every day, and, which is okay. But I think sometimes it's nice to have same but different in a sense of you know if you're listening to the same session every day the same audio recording which I did when I stopped smoking years ago when I first stopped in 1999 I listened to this progressive relaxation and it's I absolutely loved it listen to it every day first thing in the morning and there was music in the background and it was like really professional and it's beautiful I really liked it and the lady's voice was just she's American but she sounded amazing such a such an amazing voice it just you know for me I, I said I really liked it. I forget what it was called. So I listened to that every day. And I'd start listening to it and straight away I'd feel relaxed and calm. But I would have loved to have listened to her voice every day saying something different. Maybe not wildly different, I mean you know I didn't I mean the, f the main session was just her talking about walking through a forest and um, you know all that stuff just a bit of visual a bit of uh, this and that you know but it, was, it was really nice so I liked you know I would perhaps be happy with a bit more of that different things maybe um, even without music that's what I mean, and I, I'm saying I wanted to hear her doing animal noises, you know, impressions of zoo animals. That's not what that wouldn't have calmed me down. I don't think, you know. Now a lion. No, it's it's it wouldn't have probably wouldn't have been that relaxing. A cheetah, a hyena. No, no, that wouldn't have, wouldn't have really done it. So I think that's partly why I do these sessions and continue to do more and more and more of these sessions when I suppose a lot of people would just do one they just do one really good one and I'm kind of going in the opposite direction I'm doing lots and lots of really rubbish ones so I'm hoping collectively that in a few years time and maybe I've done a maybe a couple of thousand of these collectively put together it'll make one really good one or one at least one average one it's good to have goals sometimes to have I had this uh, story 
is uh, it's Milton Erickson. He was kind of like the Bruce Lee of hypnosis. He's like the pretty much the king of hypnosis. And there's been a lot of hypnotherapists or hypnotists around, um, but Milton H. Erickson is. It's just in a different league. He's in a. He's. It's like a superhero. Absolutely phenomenal person. And. He. When he was elderly, I think in his 80s, he got ill. As people do, you know, when they're different times in their lives but he he kept planning things for years ahead because he was so popular he used to get booked you know, people used to book him to come and see him or book him to go and do talks uh, in different parts of America I'm not sure if he could travel abroad because uh, of his extensive criminal record <laughs> I'm joking no because he, he was unwell I don't know if he could able to travel abroad but he his diary was full of appointments sort of two years ahead or something like that and someone asked him and he said why why if, if you're so ill you've already had yeah he did, at this point he'd had two heart attacks and but he's still you know still going but not feeling great someone asked him why do you still um, book appointments two years ahead when you're so unwell and Milton Erickson said to, to this person, I think it was one of his students, he said, what's it got to do with you? Whose business is it? It's my diary. People are paying me ahead of time. So they pay me before I've even done the work. So if I die before the work gets done, I'm in profit. Get out of my house. I made that bit up. It didn't really happen. But he did. He did have a full diary. A full calendar. And he did get asked. Why? And he said it's. We all need something to look forward to. And I don't know, I think over the years we we get a little bit lost with our words. And I know that I realise that there's a okay, I won't use the word there's a lot of people. Cause I, listening to this so I'm not going to use that word but there are, there's a few but the on my main podcast the SoundCloud one or what is it one two three four how many of these I've done eight I think I've done eight let me bore you to sleep so I've had yeah I've had over, over a th a thousand maybe twelve hundred downloads and plays of those eight you know between the eight of them so it's not too bad because I've only been doing this what just over a week but hopefully that will grow 
but you know I, I know that people of other countries listen so some of the things I say may not um, translate but I'll say it anyway because I don't care that much about whether it translates I just you know it's, hopefully it will the words the phrases looking forward to something now seems to mean being all excited about something you know like looking forward to a holiday and somebody jumping up and down getting all excited and going ooh and ee yay and you know oh I can't wait for my holiday you know that kind of excited voice and it's a uh, or looking forward to Christmas or Diwali or whatever religious see thing that you celebrate maybe you celebrate the the date that the date of you know Walt Disney's first film released I mean who knows what 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 things you celebrate but that's this, oh, I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to this I'm looking forward to that event but, but with excitement I quite like the idea of the literal term you're looking forward you're not looking back you're looking forward you're not looking sideways which doesn't make sense you're looking forward you've got things booked and planned in the future and it's not necessarily about some kind of giggle biggle excitement Giggle Biggle, That's, that could be my new term. Giggle Biggle, I'm talking about like laughing and jiggling and giggling and dancing and stripping off on top of a water tower. You know, I'm not just basically getting with friends together and say, let's go mining, let's dig up some coal. For old time's sake, it's for me looking forward to something is it has both meanings, but I like the meaning of feeling feeling as though there is a future, creating a future. Because in a sense, we all know that you know, the future doesn't exist. It's what exists is now, and there's a lot of people that, for some reason, seem to be walking backwards, and they're just constantly looking at the past. And it's a good analogy because anyone that's constantly looking at the past. will be walking backwards and will invariably keep tripping up and banging into things and possibly even hurt themselves and not necessarily going to enjoy the present and anyone staring back at the past the whole time 
but you can't see a future and you can, how, how are they going to see a future you need to be facing towards the future I love these little genius little bits of genius pearl little pearl necklaces that I that I squirt into the into the sessions it's good though it's true isn't it you can't you can't how can you see the future if you're always staring at the past walking backwards walking into the future but backwards tripping over because in the past that's the other thing when you walk backwards and you're staring into the past that's all you ever see is the past at least when you're walking forward and you're facing forward you can see you can see into the future but you can see the present and you can plan the future of course you can't see into the future and really you know 100% know what's going to happen because the future has not happened yet and your future isn't just dependent upon you you know there's outside effects and other people and the world and you know just yeah I, I live my life as if the world really does evolve around me but that's not necessarily healthy and it's definitely not true you know in all the I can plan I'm going to go and I'm going to go and have a picnic me and Andre we're going to go and sit in the park and lay around in the in the sun for well I can only do it for about 20 minutes before I burn so but you know we sit under a tree maybe hopefully the birds don't do poos on us and uh, while we're sitting under the tree try and forget the fact that the amount of dogs that have urinated up that tree throughout the years probably thousands and thousands of urinations we forget about that when we're laying under the tree and we can plan all that but what happens if it snows that's going to put a little bit of a a dampener on that so you know, we, we are affected by external circumstances we don't have to be emotionally affected by it necessarily you may say well perhaps I shouldn't plan going on a picnic a sunny picnic day with Andre in December which is a pretty good argument but we're not here to argue I'm just here to talk at, at you at you yeah so the I quite like the idea the analogy of walking facing the future walking forward facing the future because that way you can base you can kind of base next week on now because I think what I mean by that is I think some people are constantly looking at the back look at the, the past I've got a really good analogy now are you waiting for this are you ready for this this is going to be called my Wonder Woman analogy and it's got nothing to do with wobbly bosoms this is 
about the idea of somebody that's constantly looking at the past but also looking at the future they're looking at the past they're looking at the future and basing the future upon the past because it's so constantly spinning round and round between the past and the future that they seem to get a bit muddled up between which is which and what they expect to happen based on what's happened in the past and they manage to hold on to past behaviours past repressions uh, past limiting thinking like uh, racism and uh, homophobia and sexism and uh, not able to believe in themselves because they're looking at the past and then they're looking at the future and they're spinning around so fast which is chaotic causes chaos and how can the future be steady if the past is unsteady and because they're looking at the future and the future has and this is a maybe here this is a just a possibility of what's going on the future is flexible the future is what could be but because the person's spinning so fast between the past and the future that they seem to begin to make the past also flexible so the past may be changing and the person may sound like they're lying a lot because they contradict themselves they tell a story of the past and it might be a different story from the story they told last week but it's not their fault it's because they're spinning around looking at both and maybe can't differentiate between the past and the future and it's so difficult for that person possibly in the past to have made plans for the future because they might assume that what's happened previously will therefore happen again which isn't really the rule of life behaviour can repeat it's not definitely going to you know we do have a say in this stuff I mean, admittedly you can't stand on the side of a bubbling erupting volcano and uh, ask it to stop erupting and expect it to say oh okay then and just to stop doing what it's doing however when you have a thought or a feeling it's not useful maybe you can stand there and say nah I don't I don't want this thanks this isn't useful is this useful for my life is this useful for happiness is this useful for those that I care about is this behaviour 
helpful to them. So we can ask ourselves, also is this behaviour useful for me? I don't mean your behaviour for me, but your behaviour for you, how it affects you. So I'm trying to make these sessions boring, but I think this was uh, really exciting, this one. Uh, I slept quite well tonight last night <sighs> so the new thing that I'm doing well I didn't do it yesterday because I didn't make these one of these sessions yesterday because I was up all night I didn't I just wasn't able to do it but my routine is to go to bed at night and then when I wake up, I'll do this session. And that might seem weird to do it then, but if I do it when I sleep, if I do it late at night, I'll just, I might just fall asleep. But I am still in bed. I'm sitting up in bed doing this. Because again, if I lay down, the chances are I'll just drift off and because my voice is it does bore me Uh, your body and mind is calmed down during the period of this session hope that you've relaxed and loose and happy I just want you to know that you're not alone. It might sound like a silly question, silly, um, not question, a silly statement. You may be sitting there with your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, giraffe, or whatever, and be thinking well of course I'm not alone but I can't know that can I but my nan used to say something to me years ago she used to say Jason what are you doing under my bed no she didn't she didn't say that she said, that she could feel lonely, even in a crowd. And I remember the time she said it to me, because she was shaving my back. No, she wasn't shaving my back, because we were walking down to the seafront to a I suppose some kind of carnival thing going on so I guess it was in the summer or it might have been in the winter it might have been a Christmas thing it 
and we were just walking towards a big crowd and she said that at some time you know she could feel alone when in a crowd so I think I kind of I could understand that So when I say you're not alone is from different angles there are people like you there are people that have similar experiences to you that can relate to you that you can relate to there are other people also to remember This is something that Boston Chicky reminded me of. Up with a cough. (coughs) (coughs) Oh, blow me. She didn't say, I'm going to cough. That wasn't that some dramatic version of something that Boston Chicky said. God, can you imagine everyone's moaning? He bored me to sleep and I actually did fall asleep. And I woke up and he started, because he was coughing. How dare he be ill? Coughing. can not believe it. I'll put him in a coffin if he does that again. <laughs> what she said is... reminded me we've all helped people we've helped people during our lives and we may not even be aware of those people that we've helped we may not even be alert to it you might have said something, might have offered a what we thought was a meaningless or seemingly, you know, just a standard greeting or gesture to that person. They could change their life. And I could talk about this forever. And I might actually, I might write a book about this. Because I've got so many different examples. Just remember that you have had a great effect on the the world on that I'm going stay safe bye